not cut in toward the cable center. Angle your blade into the base of the rail. As the rewarmed sleeve shrinks, it will pull back from the cut, causing a separation. With pliers, peel the sleeve from the cable sheath. Adhesive which remains on the cable jacket does not have to be removed if a new WRSS sleeve is to be used for reclosure. The new sleeve can be applied directly over the original site without additional cable preparation. If removal of the WRSS adhesive is necessary, it may be accomplished using a shave hook or rasp. When a WRSS sleeve is used for maintenance or repair of cables which have only minor sheath removal, as in the case of rodent bites, T-zone repair, sheath abrasion, lashing wire cuts, lead sheath corrosion, or fire damage, the installation procedures just demonstrated are appropriate. But when a WRSS is used over diameter changes, bonding hardware, double sheath cable, taped auxiliaries, long length repairs, or cable bends, special procedures are required. Let's deal first with a treble opening on lead sheath cable. After making sure that the cable pressure is bled to zero, place a temporary bond, make your opening, and repair the conductors per locally approved practice. After placing desiccant in the wire work, wrap the opening with muslin. Install the permanent bond, and then remove the temporary bond. Now, using minimal tension, apply two half-lapped layers of DR tape. Overlap the abraded lead sheath by about one inch on each side of the opening. Be sure that the DR tape covers the ends of the bond bar. Next, scuff the sheath for six inches on each side of the opening and clean off any residual dust inhibiting cream. Preheat the scuffed lead sheath evenly until it is hot to the touch. Be careful to keep the flame from contacting the DR tape. After measuring and trimming the sleeve and channels, assemble the WRSS sleeve over the opening. The sleeve should extend a minimum of five inches beyond the DR tape. The sleeve should be rotated so that the channel is at least 90 degrees from the bond bar. Now, shrink the sleeve as previously demonstrated. Remember to conform the channel to the transition with a blunt object. As in the other examples, the channel must be cool to the touch before the sleeve can be moved or repressurized. When using the WRSS sleeve for the repair of a treble opening on polyethylene sheathed cable, first make the opening and place bond clamps and a temporary bond as soon as possible. After repairing the conductors per locally approved practice, Wrap the opening with two half-lapped layers of polyethylene tape. Now place the permanent bond and cut off any excess bond clamp stud. If the bonding clamps have ears, bend them down and file the studs until they're smooth. Cover the clamps with two layers of two-inch DR tape using minimal tension. Now cover the entire opening with two half-lapped layers of two-inch DR tape. The taping should begin and end in the center of the splice opening. The rest of the installation steps, including cleaning and scuffing, the application of four-inch aluminum tape, measuring and sleeve selection, sleeve and channel trimming, and flame treating 
are identical to the standard polyethylene cable installation. When the sleeve is assembled over the prepared area, the channel must be rotated at least 90 degrees from the position of the bond bar. The WRSS sleeve may now be recovered as in the previous examples. In order to make an intersheath dam on double sheath cable, first make a ring cut and remove a 7 inch section of outer cable sheath. Remove the exposed metal shield and dress the remaining edges of the shield to remove any sharp protrusions. Install bond clamps and a temporary bond as soon as possible. With solvent, clean the exposed inner sheath and thoroughly scuff the sheath around its circumference. Now, flame treat the entire surface of the scuffed inner sheath. Allow about five seconds per foot. Install the permanent bond. Do not use bonding braid. Position the plimmer's tape or bond bar holes on the bond clamp studs so that you have enough slack to bend the bond bar to conform to the surface of the inner sheath. Remove the release paper from two ADP pads and position them longitudinally underneath the bond bar. The six inch long adhesive pad should be overlapped lengthwise so that they extend across the full sheath opening. Secure the pads with two laps of vinyl tape. After tightening the bond clamp nuts, cut off the excess bond clamp studs. File the cut ends until smooth. If the clamps have ears, bend them down. In order to cover the bond clamps and to hold the bond bar tightly against the inner sheath, wrap each bond clamp with two laps of two inch DR tape under minimal tension. The tape must not extend more than one inch inside the sheath opening. Secure the bond bar in the center of the opening with two tightly wrapped laps of three quarter inch DR tape. After cleaning and abrading, place 4 inch aluminum tape as previously demonstrated. Then measure the prepared area for minimum and maximum diameter. Select the proper size WRSS sleeve. Cut the sleeve and channel to size. Flame brush the cable sheath and assemble the sleeve making sure that the channel is 90 degrees or more out from the bond bar. The sleeve may now be recovered and cooled as already demonstrated. If a WRSS sleeve is to be used to repair a leaking taped auxiliary, first prepare the site by removing all previously installed tapes and hose clamps. This procedure requires a full 5 inch adhesive bonding length on the polyethylene cable jacket. If the cable is pressurized, bleed the pressure to zero and be sure to leave the cable flat during the entire WRSS sleeve installation. After thoroughly cleaning off all old tape residue, Scuff six inches of the lead auxiliary sleeve and then clean and scuff six inches of the polyethylene jacket. Apply three quarter inch DR tape to smooth the transition area between the lead sleeve and the polyethylene sheath. Place four inch aluminum tape as already demonstrated. Be sure to leave a full 5 inch bond line. Smooth the tape with a blunt object. Now follow standard installation procedures to measure, select, and cut the WRSS sleeve.